So if you're just joining along, this is the third video in a multi-part series. If you want to go to the beginning, there'll be a link in the description to the actual playlist. So in the first video, we created a particle system where we created a custom particle. And then we also used modifiers to create a custom path for the particle emitter. So then in that second video, we took that particle system. We then put it into a 3D environment. We took every particle that was generated. We used a mesh, which in this case, it was just a sphere. And then we added on one of the shaders that actually comes with Fusion. We added that in and we added in some lighting into that 3D environment so that when it spun and it was in front of the camera, it would shine a little bit. Uh, unlike what you can do with the particles. So that's where we're at currently. In this one, we're just going to be adding on a bunch of effects that we can only do in the DaVinci Resolve version of Fusion because they are actually Resolve effects and they're not a part of Studio Fu or the Fusion Studio uh, standalone program. So that's what we're gonna be doing now. So let's just jump right in. Okay, so this is where we're currently at. Again, we made our particle system, oh, right here, our particle system. And then we have our 3D environment, all of this like uh, darker blue stuff. And now we're going to be adding in all of our different effects. So the first effect that let's throw in is let's throw in some glow. So if we just go glow, we're actually a couple of different glows here. And let's actually go to this glow because I believe that this is one of the Resolve Effects glows. The other glows do have some um, stuff that they can do as well, but we're just going to be using this one for now. For now, let's just put this on a black background so we can actually see those effects being applied. Let's come back over here. We can see it's kind of only glowing in this little area compared to if we just used the normal glow and we connected this up, we can see how it kind of like blurs just everything. So it's a slightly different glow, um, you know, just slightly different in the effects, but I like this glow a little bit more. And it really comes down to what you're currently uh, doing and what kind of works for you. So I'm just gonna move these around a little bit until I get something that I like. And let's actually increase this a little bit. So let's reset that and we'll bring this back just a little bit and bring up the gain. And we can see that we're just kind of, you know, we're just lighting up just a little bit. So as the spins, the bit that gets really, that gets hit by the light, it blows out the camera a little bit. It just gives that more of like a glowy, that, that particular portion, the highlights there, they're really shining back at the camera. So let's just go with that. I think that looks pretty cool. All right, so the next thing, let's throw this in. And I think that I mentioned this in the last one. I don't really remember exactly which ones are studio only and which ones aren't, but you'll at least know that they exist and how to do them if you ever do get. Uh, one of the ones that I like doing is a prism blur. And this really starts to add on some uh, cool effects. Like we can see that on the sides there, let's turn this on and off, right? And as we, oops, I like this aberration. Like it really starts to give you like that chromatic aberration kind of thing. We can increase its strength and let's maybe not the distance as far, but it really looks cool. And we move this around to get the effect to go in a different area, but I just want to keep it right in the middle. And that, the only thing that I kind of don't like with this is this blur strength. So we just have to watch that. Um, the blurry bits there. So that's currently what we're looking at so far. All right. So next, let's throw on a better background in all of this. So for now, I'm just going to get rid of this. And actually, let's take this particular background and let's get like a dark green. So let's bring it in and get something like that, right? So like a dark green. Let's go full screen and just this. So there's a couple of cool things that we can do here. Let's also add in a grid. So um, if we hit down shift and spacebar, I don't know if, I think I use this for prism blur. Uh, this is the select tool. If you know the name, then you can just type it in here. So I'm just going to type in here grid and it will bring up the grid and then we can connect this in and we'll have this little grid. One thing that I don't like are these major lines. So I just remove the major lines. It's just the thick ones there. And we're just going to keep it like this but I don't like how sharp all these lines are. And we might actually change this color to 
kind of be very similar to this. So I'm just going to click in here and this UI is going to be a little different if you're on Mac or Windows. Uh, but in Mac, I think it's just a bunch of pencils, but somewhere you should see like this little hex icon and you should then be able to get the number. Um, so we wanna grab that number. So then when we come over to the grid, or I think in this you can save colors as well on Mac, but I'm just going to go like that, add that color in, and then just increase the brightness level just ever so slightly so it looks kind of like that. But we can see that these lines are very sharp. So I wanna blur them just ever so slightly. So I'm just going to get normal blur. So we're just going to add in blur. Remember shift space bar, then just type in blur. And now if we view this, remember you have to view each node. So this is the blur node. Uh, we can see that it just kind of knocked off that edge just a little bit, just a little bit like that. So it looks a little, little more organic and like it's a little older. So that now let's um, add this in and see what we're currently working with. Whoops, let's flip that. Actually, you know what, we don't even need that. So let's just connect this right into here and then view this. And that's currently what we're looking at, right? So it doesn't look horrible, but uh, in the original that I had, I did a couple of other little things. So one of them is I used a uh, displace. So if I go into displace and then we connect this into displace and connect this over, now we can add a, a map in here to displace. So I'm just gonna grab in another background and grab a uh, ellipse and we're gonna connect these up and just view them like this. The background itself, we're gonna make it white. And then in the ellipse, we're just going to make it wider like this and maybe even up to the edges and we're going to soften it out and we might actually soften this out even more. So like you can, you can just type in here any value you want, but something like that. And now if we connect this in and take a look at this, we can see that it is, um, if we take a look with it off versus it on, it's kind of like bulging out a little bit. Uh, I think I actually want this to go the other way. So go in like that. And then once we're at that point, I'm gonna take all this and move it over slightly. We can either come up here and grab a transform. So if I click on this and then click here, it'll automatically add it in. You can also drag it down and connect it up yourself. You can also type it in, in here you can type in transform, but we're gonna add on the transform and then just make it bigger. Let's actually view it. We'll make it bigger so that's the only thing we see. Whoops, that's too much, just so we don't see it. And it's obviously going to matter on how much you add in this uh, effect here. So now that we have it like that, if we view it, so it's currently what we're viewing. And now I want everything to be affected by a lens. Um, let's add in a lens distortion. Connect that in. And now for this, we can add it in even more so. It's up to you how much, but now this is going to also affect this a little bit because it's being fed in. And let's add in a little border here. So we're gonna grab a background and we're gonna grab a rectangle, connect these up. Let's just view this for now. In the rectangle, invert that bad boy and let's bring it out so that we have a little bit on the edges and we can round the corners a little bit like that and soften them ever so slightly. And now we can connect this on top. And now if we view it, that's what we're working with. And we don't have to have it that bright. So in this merge, we can bring this back a little bit so we can see in here a little bit, right? So that was before we bring it back just a little bit. We'll see just in a little bit. And that is kind of the effect that I had up until this point. The other thing you can add on here, and you're not really gonna be able to see this that much, in uh, on YouTube, but you can also add in grain. And I believe that this particular uh, grain is uh, studio only. Whoops, that's grid. I believe that this grain is studio only, but I can show you another location. So we have this grain, if you can see that, that we can add on. And I think that that power is probably a little too much. So we might knock it back just ever so slightly. And it really gives a pretty cool texture. Uh, but th there's something else that you can also do if you don't have the ability to do grain. You can do TV 
and this is going to be slightly different in how it looks, but we're gonna take the scan lines down and if we come over here into noise, if we move this, we kind of get that grain effect going, right? So all you have to do is just right click in here, modify with, and you can go animation curve and it will animate. If you want it to go faster, you just come over here and in the scale, you can just increase this to like three and then it'll uh, move a little bit faster. Now it'll kind of give you like a grain effect. Uh, you might want to knock that back down a little bit. So maybe back that power off just ever so slightly so it's not as much. So you have either one of those uh, if you want it. They're, obviously, they work slightly different, but um, that's going to be the, the free version of green. So then once you're at this point, you can then just go and uh, render it out, change the colors up a little bit. I'm thinking that this uh, prism blur is going to be, or the strength of the... Um, thing is just going to be a little much maybe that maybe the direction in just ever so slightly like that that might be a little bit better but that's kind of how i created this weird effect and like i said i don't really know what to call it but that's uh it's if you do want the original file and you want to play around in that because maybe you like the aesthetic of that one specifically that will be on my website that you can download if you are a pro member speaking about pro member if you want to know more about davinci resolve and you might want to become certified or you just want to know more about a specific page i am a training partner for black match designs and i'm actually a certified trainer for davinci resolve editing fusion Fairlight color page. Uh, all of that uh, is on the website that you can take a look at if you want to know more information, more than just the YouTube tutorials that are up here. Uh, we're talking tens of hours of content on there. With that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I think that this overall came out pretty well. You can take a look back at the other videos if you missed one of the other uh, portions of it. Again, the link will be in the description to the playlist.